I recently read an article, linked below, of an interview with famed programmer John Carmack. The legendary developer has recently turned his attention to the creation of artificial general intelligence, and in my opinion, he's the dark horse candidate to beat the major research labs to the punch. There's really one fundamental reason I think Carmack has the best chance of coming up with a viable route to AGI. The reason is that he's an outsider. He's not coming from the hallowed halls of Ivy League level research into artificial intelligence. He's simply a brilliant programmer who thinks in terms of systems and is willing to acquaint himself with what is going on in the field now and what has been done in the past. I think this is the right combination of qualities for the sort of out-of-the-box thinking we'll need to solve the problem of strong artificial intelligence. I think it's accurate to say that nobody really has a clear route to go from the current state of AI research to a functional artificial general intelligence. Many industry titans have their pent avenues of research that they think will pan out, but I think this stems more from their own internal biases than any objective assessment of the field. This comes from, I think, from a sort of normalcy bias where people think the way things are is a way they will continue. Progress is fast-paced right now, so why won't that continue into the future? Well, the reason it will hit a brick wall, I think, is that there is no path from the sorts of narrow AI we have now to the grail of a more general AI. Intelligence, in the general sense, isn't merely a bolt-on collection of narrow functions. Human intelligence is more than the integration of visual recognition, speech synthesis, and playing video games. There is something fundamentally different about general intelligence. Of course, our intelligence relies on the integration of our perception, but it is more than the sum of its parts. Blind people can still think and solve problems, even if they were born without vision. The fact that taking away one of those narrow functions of our intelligence doesn't result in a catastrophic breakdown in our minds is at least a suggestion that we're not merely a collection of narrow functions. I'm sure that there are those who would disagree. There are some who would argue that, due to the advancements of the last decade, the currently entrenched players are the ones that will carry the torch forward to the finish line. While this is an argument to be made, I don't find it particularly compelling. One could argue that access to megacorporation level of resources is an insurmountable advantage for the big players, but I don't actually think that's the case. Underlying this argument are some assumptions. One big assumption is that compute power is going to be a limiting factor in AGI. In the extreme, you have the Ray Kurzweil disciples who quote Moore's Law as some sort of self-evident proof that an artificial general intelligence is inevitable. All we have to do is keep building smaller and smaller transistors and then cram more of them on a chip and voila, out pops a human level intelligence. This is a non sequitur of the most obvious kind. The fact is that what makes all of this compute power so useful is the development of deep learning. It's a combination of the neural network, backpropagation, and gradient descent algorithms that coupled to the recent leaps in compute power that have powered our current narrow AI revolution. Of course, these algorithmic developments did come from academia, but they were put forth in a different era before the sort of intellectual capture we see today. The field of AI research is no longer in its infancy, and this means that the entrenched players now firmly have their hands on the purse strings. There is thus a strong financial incentive to keep funding status quo research. Another assumption underlying the argument that entrenched players will get to AGI first is that the human capital advantage is overwhelming. While it's certainly true that mega corporations such as Google, Facebook, and their ilk have incredibly talented and intelligent people working for them, they are all fundamentally cut from the same cloth. This is to say they're all coming from the same schools that preach the same philosophies around the same computational approaches to intelligence. Some of these students turned researchers almost certainly have out-of-the-box ideas around how to approach the problem of intelligence, but good luck convincing middle management to let you spend your working hours on that idea rather than the bread and butter deep learning based technologies that have raised these mega corporations to juggernaut status. There's simply too much machinery based on deep learning, machinery which has made these corporations billions of dollars to make a business case for reinventing the wheel. Therefore, all this human capital, while it can drive these corporations to raise their bottom line to stratospheric heights, is unlikely to solve the kinds of problems needed for the development of a true AGI. If you disagree with this assessment, then you have to answer a basic question. Why is it that all of the major research labs come out with similar products in rapid succession? 
Why do we see both Google and Facebook releasing image generators around the same time? Why are multiple groups working on chatbots like GPT-3 all at the same time? If all of these resources meant these mega corporations are the kings of innovation, then where is all that innovation? Where is the diversity in approaches to the fundamental problem of strong artificial intelligence? I think the field of AI is ready for a strong contender to take the throne seemingly out of nowhere. For the moment, it seems like Carmack could be the one. However, I do have my own critique of the views he expressed in this interview. The biggest problem, I think, is that he's not thinking outside the box enough. He spent his time getting acquainted with the field of AI, which is of course the first small step, but then he doesn't take the next logical step. What do other fields have to say about intelligence? What insights can information theory and fundamental physics give us regarding intelligence? To be fair, I think Carmack has a strong chance of coming around to answering these questions because he's open-minded enough to come to them on his own, but I don't think anyone will develop a true AGI until they do. A true machine intelligence may very well not look like a human one. In fact, it would probably be more alien to us than literal alien beings from another world. At least they would have evolved under natural selection rather than being designed in a lab. After all, boats don't wiggle back and forth and planes don't flap their wings. They rely on the same underlying physical principles as their natural counterparts, but the implementation is a ground-up application of the physics underlying motion through air and water. Why wouldn't an artificial general intelligence be similar? So then we come to the question, what exactly is intelligence? Is it merely the interaction of various perceptory systems, or is it something more? I think it's clear which camp I'm in, but what about you? What do you think?